My name is Shira Strongen. I'm a senior majoring in political communications, and I am the co-president of GW Students Against Sexual Assault. So the Clothesline Project is a, a long-standing way of elevating survivors and empowering them to share their story in places that might not be safe for them to do so, um, particularly with articles of clothing that were worn during the time of the assault is what's traditionally used. Um, that's not what we did here. That can be very triggering and, and harmful to survivors just as much as it can be powerful to others. Um, justice is the survivor's choice and that's what we empower here. But we adapted it to GW by asking students to submit all forms of harm that were kind of caused by the administration, some relating to sexual violence, some related to racism, homophobia, other just forms of harm that the administration kind of perpetuated. You know, sexual violence is only one element of harm. And as GW SASA, that is absolutely our focus, but it's also intersectional, right? Sexual violence itself is experienced differently by people of color, by people who are LGBTQ, different religious faiths, etc. And so looking at how all of these other marginalized communities experience harm and how the university can perpetuate that and how the university can support that as well is what we're looking towards. And what we did to protect anonymity is we split the t-shirts up. A, the survey was all anonymous, but we split the t-shirts up between us so that we wrote all of the statements down so that no handwriting could be identified or anything like that. Um, and that's how we adapted it to GW. One of the really challenging things about seeing this was there were about 64 shirts total and a majority of them were really similar and a lot of them were similar in the same ways of harm and invalidation being caused by the administration so there were a lot of stories of title nine laughing um, during intakes of sexual violence there were a lot of stories of gw counselors saying really terrible things um, in response to whether it was a sexual violence survivor or just a survivor of other kinds of trauma or harm coming to them and seeking help. Um, there were just a lot of negligence, a lot of refusal to act, um, particularly by GWPD, which was interesting considering GWPD was called to our event, not by us. Um, and GWPD did show up, I had to deal with that. It was a very interesting dynamic because it's like, what you choose to take action on and inaction on are very interesting. Basically, the administration has been very slow in their response times. Um, it's been a lot of empty promises, a lot of, oh, we hear you, and not much action. They finally did release a statement after the healing and listening session. That was six weeks to the day after it. Um, the context of the statement is essentially the recommendations that we released I believe five days after the initial listening session. And when we released them on social media, we also directly emailed them to administration. So they got that list five days after the listening session. The statement is the exact list of those things six weeks late. They're planning on instituting a great deal more trainings for GWPD, for Title IX. They're opening up more positions within Title IX office. Title IX has promised to hire a sexual violence prevention response coordinator. That's kind of the main position that they're holding. They're saying that they're also going to now be fully staffed, which is great. They should be fully staffed. They are hiring a position within Office of Advocacy and Support. They are going to be doing some research on said trainings and the best ways to implement programming for students. FSL specifically is looking at FSL, Fraternity and Sorority Life, um, ways to incorporate building block kind of training on sexual violence prevention within their program. And there will be multiple events over the course of next semester. We don't know what they will be, but that is in the statement that multiple events will, will happen related to these things. The reason I'm excited about it is because there's finally a plan that's public and we can hold them accountable using this and use their own words against them. But there's a lot of trust to be rebuilt. And I don't think that that's going to happen quickly. And that's kind of the hope with the Clothesline Project was to help push them and show them that just because they finally made a statement, it's not enough. And that they're going to have to actually act on things because this problem is so severe across campus. And now even more people are aware of it. We want to see things implemented. GW has a really big history of empty promises and promises on paper. And one thing I do want to say in administration's credit, um, policy change takes time, culture change takes longer. And a lot of what we're asking for are changes in culture. We recognize that we can't put a time limit on that, but we can expect actions to be taken to initiate it. And that's on them to do starting immediately. Oftentimes when we see change happen, or rather when we see perceived change happen, we stop advocating. Now that they've released their statement, 
it seems like, oh, cool, we're done. And we can't allow that to happen. And so, you know, SASA is going to keep doing what we do best, which is advocating on behalf of survivors, educating and supporting survivors and educating on sexual violence prevention and doing all these other things. And we're going to keep holding the administration accountable and also collaborating with them to ensure that these things are being done with students in mind. And we ask others to do the same. We ask others to help us keep them accountable and not just say, oh, great, we're done. This is easy. Um, Letters out, all is well. Don't let them off the hook that easily. Hold them accountable.